All right. So once you get the scenes written down on post-its, preferably, or whatever you like to structure your ideas uh, with, then you need to start kind of looking at it. So you're going to want to start to put them up. And the reason why you're putting them up is so you can watch them and kind of see how they tie together and try to cluster them in some way so that you have kind of a way to uh, pair scenes together or see how they connect. <sighs> okay, so these are my scenes. Uh, these are just the basic scenes. Like these are the first scenes that we uh, took out of the whole script and everything. So now I'm just gonna look at them and see like how do they connect to each other? Like what storylines do we have? And if we just look at the whole driving part, because that's one of them, I would try to kind of cluster these all these driving scenes into one, so that you see like this is one narrative that could be one thing. So, basically, here we have the family stuff. Uh, you have in Stockholm where he's with his family. You have dinner at home with his family. You have at home just hanging out. This one though is kind of connected to this one which is him trying to get a gig on TV. So I'm just gonna put that together with the family stuff even though it isn't really. And now what you have is basically three key narratives that you can work from. So what I usually do is kind of just take a look at them and see like what do we have. Okay, so we have that one, that one, that one. Try to connect them. Once you know that, once you know that for instance this here, the whole car narrative is one of the key things then you can start to build a whole structure around that. Here you have a more music narrative. So then you start to look at like, okay, so how can we develop the music narrative to have a conflict and, you know, it needs to develop. It needs to have a progression within that narrative. So we have four, four key scenes. How do we put them? In what order? How do they connect to each other? How do we kind of develop this scene to tie into the next time this story comes back and it continues. Those things are what you uh, can start to think about when you see how they connect. Uh, and then of course this whole family uh, part, it's the same. You start to look at it the same as you did with the other ones. Yeah, so that's basically how we thought about the whole narrative structure and all that. Yeah, but then we started editing and things can change and you know they develop and you start to uh, look at the scenes and then you go from there and this is an evolving process so this is just the first baby step okay so i re-edited the first episode mm -hmm. uh, now with my voiceover and and then uh, also i brought in what Trump says about the shithole mm. incident and all that, or what he says about African countries being a shithole. Uh, so watch it and then we can talk about the edit and, yeah. and everything afterwards. Yeah. My name is uh, Ken Daniels. I think I'm an artist slash TV personality. I thought it, was, it would be good to, to see what Uganda has to offer. What do you think? Yeah, I think uh, the first episode was kind of like the least favorite episode for me. Mm -hmm. uh, because I thought that they were like gradually getting better. Yeah. Things that we felt were missing in the first episode, I, I feel like they are there now. Yeah. Uh, and it feels more like a, a prologue to the series and I think that's important for the first episode. Yeah. So I think it's great. Yeah, I think it, it, it felt like, um, first of all, the shithole <laughs> thing. That became obvious to me, like, okay, so this is the perfect thing to make it current. Because it's kind of hard to make a film that's like five years old mm -hmm. and then make it current. But that make it 
uh, currently in a way and then me catching up with Navio and Ken in Sweden also does it but uh, the first episode lacked that I mm. think and now it feels like uh, it's there and we knew we would put the voiceover in but yeah. um, I think it made sense too to kind of connect it to immigration because that was what we talked about in yeah. the beginning also. Okay, so Jonathan has edited the whole Confused African series uh, and we brought him on to start working with us. He's been working with us since then. Uh, so what did you think about editing the whole episode and what was difficult? Uh, it was an interesting uh, topic that I felt uh, hadn't really been explored before, but it was also hard. Uh, because we didn't have like any clear understanding of exactly what we wanted to do. So we spent a lot of time uh, discussing beforehand. Yeah, it's funny because it was shot about five years ago. And it's only shot, I think, in two weeks. Mm. And there's so much stuff actually. And it was shot, you know, as a side thing while I was shooting a different film. So I'm pretty amazed that we actually had so much material that it mm -hmm. worked to be about an hour because uh, I didn't have a I had a plan for what the narrative would be but it would also develop because it changed during five years and all yeah. that what was the difficult scenes or what, what was difficult to put together maybe the scenes that uh, didn't have like a lot of dialogue mm -hmm. uh, because some scenes we knew exactly like uh, he says this and this should be in this part of the series and then there, we had some scenes that uh, kind of felt like they did give something to, to the whole idea uh, uh, but we didn't know exactly how to use them yeah. yeah I think that was a big thing that we just shot it as scenes that could be you know, useful but then the whole narrative structure around him fighting with the car mm. was the thing that you know came as it was shot but then it was really clear when we watched what scenes we had because mm. we first edited the scenes and then you could see pretty uh, clearly that his battle with you know coming back to Uganda was very vis visual in you know him driving his car it's breaking yeah. down the roads <laughs> are bumpy <laughs> and, and all those things and it, it's like an everyday thing instead of making it so political because I don't feel like it's that political as no. a story it's no. more about like him just trying to <laughs> survive <laughs> now when i see it i don't know if it's because it's it's fresh to me to see the whole story and you know I've, i haven't seen it and now you know you see it and then you kind of become fond of what you've done uh, but i think that in a way i see this as a maybe even stronger project than the part of Africa, mm -hmm. for instance, because I feel like it's easier for people to get into and to understand, and it's easier to, for people to actually watch it, and that makes you know an impact too, mm -hmm. not just the subject. How do you feel like the, the way of working out the story and everything? Mm -hmm. Like how how do, would you say is a good way to work out a story while you're editing? I think that if you see it as you're talking to someone and you can't use words you have to show them pictures all the time like you're trying to tell somebody something that happened to you but you're only using pictures to like describe something specific anybody can learn to push buttons that's not the hard part the hard part is like telling the story and preferably you would like to maybe edit first without the sound but that's not possible because you need the sound uh, and then like put the sound there but yeah but if you can make it interesting then then it's gonna be yeah. interesting with sound so yeah, yeah it totally makes sense all right thank you for watching let me know what you thought about this breakdown of the editing of the confused african and uh, yeah comment below and uh, hope you liked this week's episode Tune in next week for another breakdown and another episode of the Confused African. See ya!